Mm, that's true. In the past, we've looked at games that are better on Super Nintendo over Sega Genesis, we've looked at games that are better on Sega Genesis over Super Nintendo, but let's take a gander at a few games that were released on both the NES and Super Nintendo, with the better playthrough being on the NES. There's no better example of this than the Ninja Gaiden series, and I'm speaking, of course, of Ninja Gaiden Trilogy for Super Nintendo. Now, if this compilation were handled the same way Super Mario All-Stars was, then it might actually be worth the absurd price it's going for on eBay, but instead the visuals were just kinda half-assed, the button layout stays at A to jump and B to attack instead of Y to attack and B to jump to better fit the Super Nintendo controller, with no option of changing this. And the soundtrack was redone, and while it's the same compositions, it sounds completely different with this weird-ass sound font. Hell, the NES versions of these games have backgrounds with parallax scrolling, while the SNES compilation doesn't. What is up with that? So yeah, this is an easy call. The Ninja Gaiden games are much better played on the NES over Super Nintendo. Paperboy 2 is another example. The Super Nintendo version is clunky and way too difficult. All the stuff trying to slow your progress is like 10 times faster than you can possibly react. It's just a pain in the ass to try and play. Plus the music, ugh. The NES version of the game has a much better balance of speed, and as a result the game is a lot more forgiving. The game may look kind of weird since your character has this odd orange outline, probably to help them stand out amongst all the craziness, but still, I enjoy Paperboy 2 a lot more on NES, if nothing else because I don't have to to hear that awful SNES soundtrack. Here's one that's not a direct comparison, but it's the same series, with Final Fight and Mighty Final Fight. The Super Nintendo port of Final Fight is extremely limited, it's paced slowly with long levels that stretch out forever, and with boss fights that are way too difficult. It does have its strengths like the great music, pixel art, and sound design, but its limitations get in the way far too often. The NES came back two years after that release with Mighty Final Fight, and it's a parodious style spin-off of the Final Fight series featuring super deformed character design and some expressive sprite work. Gotta love the look on these guys' faces as they get their asses kicked. Mighty Final Fight is a solid beat-em-up with a lot of personality, and it's well worth playing over the SNES Final Fight port any day. Some games on this list just boil down to simple features that need to be pointed out, like Super Off-Road. As you can see, there's uh, not exactly a world of difference between the two games visually, they both have the same layout, and they both play the same way. The big advantage the SNES has is in the soundtrack, but it needs to be pointed out that the NES version of Super Off-Road is compatible with up to four players, and the Super Nintendo version is not. I know there's a lot of people out there always looking for multiplayer games beyond just two-player, and Super Off-Road is a good one for NES, and there's no slowdown or flickering in the gameplay either. It's a fun time. Now, I know Battletoads and Battle Maniacs was advertised as a sequel to Battletoads, but it's actually kind of a spruced up remake with larger sprites and more detailed settings. Sure, there are some bonus levels thrown in, but a lot of the levels are laid out in the same infuriating way, like the Turbo Tunnel or that damn snake level if you can even get that far. But I feel like if you're gonna suffer through a Battletoads game, you're better off with the original NES edition. Sure, both the SNES and Genesis games have better visuals, but the NES game has the great soundtrack, including that awesome pop music. the cartoony atmosphere, and that great first boss fight where the viewpoint changes to the boss's perspective. That boss fight's not even in the Super Nintendo game, instead it's some boring stone boar thing. The NES game also has a lot more levels, where there's only six in Battle Maniacs, all of which are based in some way on the original. It's also a tiny bit more forgiving when it comes to gaining extra lives and continues. Battle Maniacs, meanwhile, seems like you reach a game over before you know it. Yes, these games are absurdly difficult to the point of being completely unfair, and the fact that the game jolts the player around to wildly different elements of gameplay is unnerving, but if you're gonna put your blood, sweat, and tears into a Battletoads game, I'd recommend the NES game, and the Genesis game for that matter, over Battletoads and Battle Maniacs. But just between you and me, if you want to play the best Battletoads game, it's Battletoads Arcade, which is available on Xbox One right now. The Super Nintendo could never quite get Robocop right. For example, take Robocop 3. It's a side-scrolling shooter, but Robocop handles like a tank. He's so slow, and his jump is ridiculous. Plus, there's this annoying stomping sound every time he takes a step. 
make up for this, they shoehorned a couple overhead shoot 'em up levels in this one. Sure, okay, but it doesn't stop this game from being a total slog. The NES edition, on the other hand, is a perfectly okay action platformer featuring some great music, and here, Robocop uses the jetpack in a regular 2D setting, which not only looks hilarious, but it's actually kind of fun. The level design also does a decent enough job making the player think about what weapon to use and where. So yeah, the NES Robocop 3 isn't going to win any awards or anything, but I'd take it over the Super Nintendo game. And last, we have Super Ninja Boy for Super Nintendo, and Little Ninja Brothers for NES. These are both good games, I love the ideas behind both of them, taking typical RPG stuff and making the combat beat-em-up gameplay. But unfortunately, Super Ninja Boy is just extremely slow and clunky. It was clearly way ahead of its time, and it has that early SNES feel to it, like the game was made before the developer could really grasp how to get the most out of the hardware. In other words, it feels like an NES game. So, if you're gonna play a glorified NES game, you might as well play, you know, an NES game, and Little Ninja Brothers is just faster paced and better executed. That's really all there is to it. The beat-em-up mechanics are so much better here, and even better, it's two-player co-op, and the game just breezes along with a second player. Alright, that's all for now. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.